guys. Thanks so much for clicking on the video. My name is Leah and let's recap and review Real Housewives of, I was about to say Orange County, baby. We ain't even seen them yet. <laughs> Salt Lake City. This is season four, part three of the reunion. And when I tell y'all, they whacked Monica left and right. And I know some of y'all don't want to admit it, but Monica got ate up. Monica got ate up. Up and all she could do is lie and scream at these women. And I know some of you Monica fans don't want to admit it, but your girl got ate up and we gonna talk about it. So let's oh get into God. it. Before we get into it, y'all already know, we go get a little spicy, just a little bit. I got three spicy things to talk to y'all about today. Monica, her mama, and Miss Heather. So let's get into it. So first up, let's talk about this People Magazine article that had the internet ablaze before the reunion because they let it be known that Monica will not be returning for season five of Real Housewives of Salt Lake City. So the link to this article will be in the description bar below, but it starts off like this. It says, Monica Garcia departs the Real Housewives of Salt Lake City um, season after breakout debut season exclusive. It says the season four standout has been praised by critics and fans alike for making the Bravo series fourth season unmissable television. It says Monica Garcia will not be returning for the Real Housewives of Salt Lake City for its upcoming fifth season. People report exclusively on Tuesday. It says despite a breakout debut on season four of the Bravo series, the sassy standout 40 will not be joining co-stars Heather Gay, Meredith Marks, Lisa Barlow, Whitney Rose, Angie is a Cavassier, ooh, Cavort girl. <laughs> Y'all know me and these names. When cameras pick back up next month, multiple sources says it says Bravo typically does not discuss casting, but executive produce, pr producers confirmed with news Tuesday um, evening in an interview with Variety saying that the cast needed time to regroup. Andy Cohen later on Watch What Happens Live suggested it's um, Garcia's exit might be a break. It says Garcia has not commented on the exit exit and did not respond to people's inquiry so again the link for this will be in the description bar below if you would like to read the article for yourself so here's my thing when this was released i was impressed i'm not gonna lie i was shocked and i mean i was impressed mainly because i did not think bravo had the cojones you know to not concede to the fans and let Monica go because there is a huge majority of the SLC fans that love them some Monica right now and I really thought Bravo was going to be like okay they want her there even though the girls don't want to film with her we gonna have to make it work and I was shocked that they said no nah, she got she got to be put on pause or she got to She got to be, she got to be on, she we got to put on the shelf or she got to go. She got to go. And the thing about it is people are saying, oh, the ratings are going to suffer. But in all honesty, you guys, I went on Wikipedia and I looked at other sites, but the information I got, so this is coming from Wikipedia, their ratings were not that high with Monica. Y'all, the only time that their views were matching their highest rated season, which was season two, was this reunion. So a lot of people saying like the views are going to go down. The views were already down, y'all. They were already down. Monica, yes, Monica was great, but she ain't really contribute that much to the way y'all thinking she did. But hey, that's just that's just what I that's the math I did, and that's what I got from it. Now let's talk about Miss Linda, her mama. Girl. So Linda was asked on Twitter about this and a, a viewer by the name of, or a Twitter user by the name of at it's bit about Ben said at LD underscore millionaire. Are you taking this news as badly as the rest of us of a veto? I don't know what that means, but basically he was asking like, how are you feeling about this news about Monica? And Linda responded by saying, yes, but Monica has star quality. Wherever she goes, um, her hashtag R-H-O-S-L-C stands will follow her. I've been trying for years to convince her to produce her own show, something funny and uplifting. This would be the perfect time for her to do so. 
So that's what Linda had to say. And the reason why this is funny to me is because one, Monica does not have stands. She has fans, but I promise you y'all, we are fickled. By the end of next season, people might sprinkle Monica here or there because she did cement herself in reality TV history and gold, but I don't know how far that's going to take Monica, especially with a mama like Linda. Cause Linda gives very much of like, if the production doesn't do what she wants or what she asks, she gonna crash out on the internet. Cause that's what she's been doing. You've been saying Bravo is the devil. You also contradict yourself when you talk about your daughter because you saying you wanted her to bring uplifting and funny content, but y'all arguing on the internet with each other you saying she is broken and she's a liar and she's a like Linda don't make sense and Monica don't make sense but I will say if they had a plan to get on the show it definitely worked and maybe they can turn this into something I could definitely see Monica on traders and a lot of people are really invested into traders so hopefully that's where they're gonna put Monica so she could keep this train going for herself because clearly this is something that she really wants so the last thing we're going to talk about is Miss Heather. So Heather was on Watch What Happens Live last night. And she was asked a question that a lot of viewers wanted to know. But her response to it was very interesting to me. So I'm going to play her response to the question that she was asked by Andy. And then we're going to discuss. So let's talk about it. What do you make about the argument that fans have made uh, that y'all got more upset at Monica for the uh, account than you were about Jen Shaw ripping off the elderly? Like, yeah. I was really trying to get some emotion from the group at last year's reunion, and it was like crickets. I was the only one that was upset. Was it... It's, I mean, essentially, Jen denied ever having any guilt until she pled guilty, and she denied it the morning she pled guilty. Right. So we were supporting her in what she was professing to be saying. We none, none of us wanted her to defraud the elderly, and Jen at least was herself when she was doing that. Monica came on as a completely different person. We don't know who she really is. How can we really support her? Your reaction to the video that leaked of Monica and her mom? I mean... Give them both snowflakes. They had a plan. Uh, what was your reaction when you saw Jen Shah allegedly respond uh, to the black eye reveal from prison? And do you think she watched the reunion? I had you um, I had you address her directly. Do you think she saw that? I mean, I don't know if you can watch the reunion in prison. Yeah, Teresa, they were Teresa, they okay. had Bravo then at of course Teresa's she watched joint. It. And Joe you know? Judice, I think, <laughs> had it at, at his joint. I, I, it was a typical response, and I think she absolutely watched it. And I hope she's glad that we at least you know, uprooted Monica, who had really been after her the entire time. What he had to say. And it was weird. It was weird because on one hand, you're, what she said, I agree with. At least Jen was being herself. They don't know who Monica really is. Like, Monica lies a lot to where it's like, I don't know if what you're telling me is honestly, truly the truth. And if you are going to lie that much or be a part of a troll page, then yeah, I don't want to be friends with you. And it makes sense because at least they had a relationship with Jen, albeit it was toxic as hell. They they still had a relationship with her. And like Heather said, Jen was being Jen. So they knew who she was. Now the ending of it didn't make sense to me because girl, why are you saying I hope she's happy? It kind of leads me to believe you still want like a, a, you still have this wanting to please Jen aspect in your personality when it's like, why? The lady hit you in the face and treated you like garbage. Get a backbone, Heather. But we're going to talk about that in the reunion. So let's get into so, it. So the episode opens up and I was kind of surprised. So I watched this on Peacock. But I was actually surprised that they didn't rehash what happened at the end of last, um, the part two, where they brought up the audio about, you know, Monica talking bad about Mary and Monica saying that that, that was a, a chopped and screwed conversation. And don't get me wrong. I definitely think it was a chopped and screwed conversation, but you said those things and the way that Monica was trying to explain herself didn't really necessarily make sense to me, but they didn't rehash that. We actually started off the episode kind of just bypassing that 
that and moving on. So Meredith, um, Andy's questioning Meredith about like the facial expressions that she's making because Meredith does have a resting like bitch face, but as she do, as she also gives deer cotton headlights kind of look like she just be zoning out, <laughs> you know, disassociating. But she was like, no, I'm good. Mary's still on the stage. They then start bringing up the different games that they played on the show that caused issues with the ladies. They talked about when they went to um, Palm Springs at the Trixie Motel and the whole drag thing where Lisa was freaking out about them, like, taking off their makeup and her not wanting to do it and just doing the whole, like, doing a lot. She was doing too much. She was ODing. And then... um, They also talked about, like, who would you kick off the wagon when they did the whole Pioneer, when they were at the, like, the Old Town Williamsburg type, you know, the reenactment type place. So, Lisa and Monica are getting into it while they're rolling the package because Lisa starts to mimic Monica or what Monica said to her. So, then Monica does the same. And then Monica makes, like, an ageist joke again. And Lisa's like, Monica, shut up. You're not good at arguing. And I'm like, Lisa, neither are you. (laughs) So so what are you talking about? And um, I just, the thing that annoyed me the most about this reunion was Lisa, because at times Lisa was just jumping in. And I was like, if you don't shut up so they, so other people can talk. But then there was other times that when Lisa would jump in, she would make solid points. And I was like, you know what, Lisa, you spitting facts. But she did annoy me a lot throughout this reunion. So, um, like Lisa said, she was like, you don't argue well, Monica. And I was like, like I said, neither does Lisa. So then we get into Lisa and Monica going back and forth. We then have um, Lisa bringing up her makeup and saying how they asked, like, when's the last time you've done your own makeup? And she was like, 2019. She's like, I have glam on the go. They come over every day, do my makeup in the morning, and they leave. And Mary points out, she was like, don't you think, she was like, Lisa, you know that's an insecurity, right? And Lisa's like, no, it's not. Like, like I told my husband, I want to die with glam and die diamonds like what are y'all talking about and then Angie brings up that Lisa can't see past a certain point so I'm like is she partially blind and we don't know nothing about that that was confusing what I will say is Mary wasn't lying you constantly having to have your makeup done every day like yes I love the opulence. I love the grandeur. I love how eccentric that is. But it also is like, ma'am, that's a very, that's a, that's, in, you're insecure. We just don't have to call a thing a thing and a spade a spade. Like, you should not need people to come and do your makeup every day. You, you just shouldn't. Like, no wonder your skin was looking bad when y'all went to that, that, that place. Where they were like analyzing your face like for skincare. You're not supposed to have makeup on your face every day, girl. I hope you got a great skincare regimen. Because you got to wash that off. You have to wash that off every night. Excuse me. So then they all start doing impressions of each other. Monica does an impression of Lisa. Monica gets mad because she was like, Lisa, you're so, like, I'm not obsessed with you. Like, you're obsessed with, with saying that I'm obsessed with you. And I'm like, Monica, but you are. You get, you, out of everybody you argue with, you are the nastiest with Lisa. And honestly, Lisa hasn't done that much to you, especially in the beginning of the season, for you to be as nasty as you are to her. And the only reason you don't like her is because you you are envious of what she has. Now, her impression of Lisa was spot on. Lisa trying to act like she wasn't good at it. Girl, mm-mm. She, she did your voice amazing. <laughs> Monica really was spot on. Then they all started doing impressions of Monica. Meredith and uh, Mary did one of Whitney. And to the most part, it was right. Whitney is just a whiny person. And then Angie did an impression of Meredith. And I was just like, y'all just going to be doing impressions. But you can tell that the girls don't even see it for Monica. Because when she did her impression, nobody laughed. Nobody laughed, but in all honesty, y'all, she had the best impression. And then when everybody else did their impressions of each other, they laughed. So I was like, "Ooh, girl, they are they it's your fate was already sealed. Like they really don't like you. They don't see it for you, sis." So then 
um, they start questioning Mary about the Watch What Happens Live comment where a lot of people got mad because I remember that one because I, I casually watched it because um, besides Mary being on the show, Z Wade was on, I think that's how you say her name, Z Wade or Z Wade was on the show. And Mary did body shame Heather where she was talking about the Gucci corset and she was like, Gucci doesn't make size 14. Now, you know, like Nene said, when you got the coin, they make it in your size. And I feel like Heather is coined up. So I feel like they made it in her size. But I think they said Heather did say, I remember someone saying online that Heather did say that they sewed corsets together. Either way, it wasn't that bad of a look. But Mary cleaned it up real quickly. It was a very much like politically correct answer where she was like I wasn't body shaming her and you know she shamed me because she looks really good on the couch one thing that annoys me with these women is I don't get why y'all are scared to come at Mary and the only part of me that feels like the reason why y'all are scared of Mary is y'all don't want to be labeled as being racist if you go back and forth with Mary but truth be told this is my thing. When people can't go back and forth with black people, especially on these shows where they're like scared to be called racist, that makes me feel like you are slightly racist because you should be able to argue with someone without that energy coming off of you that's of a different race. Like I can argue with anybody and, and, and the, the remarks or the things I say to you will not be based off of racist stereotypes or... I wouldn't be punching down to your race. So them being scared to argue with Mary irritates me because Mary is very nasty towards them. Like, don't get me wrong. That inbred comment she gave to Whitney, I ain't, I'm not going to lie. I laughed when I saw that. I'm not going to lie. I was like, girl, she did not say that. But it was a nasty comment. And I'm like, if I were them, I would be eating up Mary every time. And we're not going to act like the things that they've said about Mary or the things that they brought up about Mary weren't in the press. People do think she runs a cult, okay? Her family was on, on, on YouTube doing interviews talking about that she is a cult leader. There was articles about Mary and people saying that she defrauded her, her, what's it called? Her congregation. There are plenty of articles out there about her. So I'm saying like the things they said about Mary were things that were out in the press. So I just don't, I just, I wouldn't be afraid of Mary. I just wouldn't be. So then Andy asked Mary like, hey, what do you think of the group and what is your future with the group? And Mary's response was, I'm going to continue being me and hopefully they will accept me. You know, I, I'm, I just, you know, you have to accept me. And I was like, yeah, they can accept you, but they don't have to accept how nasty or how rude you are with the things you say. Because my thing about Mary is Mary can dish it, but she can't take it. You equivalenting, you calling that lady inbred to your house being tacky and ugly are not the same thing. And then when they do respond to you, you're so offended that they responded to you. That makes no sense to me, Mary. Like, ma'am, you were rude to them, so they should be able to be rude back to you or read you back and you should be able to take it. I do agree with her saying that Whitney be acting like she terrified of Mary because Whitney plays victim a lot. And Whitney's response to Mary being like, I was afraid of disappointing you makes no sense to me. Makes no sense to me. All Whitney had to say was, I don't know how to take you. Because one minute I think we cool, the next minute you coming at me. And I, I just, I just, I don't know how to take you, ma'am. I, I really don't. I really don't. That's all Whitney had to say. But the fact that she was like, I, I don't want to disappoint you, that doesn't make sense to me. Because who is who is married to disappoint? See, or, or the only thing I could think of why she would say that is because she was in a high demand religion and maybe she's still breaking down that that the restraints and that how her brain is wired. But other than that, that was a weird response to from Whitney but they end the segment right there and Mary leaves everybody gets up to go to the bathroom and 
what's her name? Monica just sitting on the stage by herself while Andy is fully engrossed in his cell phone. So the next segment of the reunion is what we all wanted to talk about. Miss Reality Von Tees and the Greek Mafia, okay? So they show the B-real footage of what it was like to be in Bermuda. And you know, we get the classic, the receipts, screenshots, 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 Everything. Shots out to Heather for that. <laughs> Shots out to her for that. So, um, Andy starts it off by asking Monica, like, are you Miss Reality Von Tees? And Monica admits that she was a part of the troll page. Now, if you see me looking at notes, y'all, front to back, we got a lot to cover. So, she lets it be known that the page was started in 2021. That is actually season two of... Um, of Salt Lake City because season one premiered during the height of the pandemic in 2020. So Andy asked Monica, were you working for Jim by that time? She says no. And I feel like that was a lie because you've been telling us that the whole point of this reality Von T's page was to take down Jen Shaw, that like she abused y'all, she treated y'all horribly, she didn't pay y'all and all of this stuff only for you to say that you weren't working with her. So what was the point of it? Because based off of the interviews that Tanisha has done and what you have said on the show, you pretty much made it seem like these were all disgruntled employees who had beef with Jen that came together to make this page. Now you're saying that you wasn't, you weren't working for her. That's, that doesn't make sense to me. She then goes on to say that this was possibly, um, cause Andy was like, did you already give your statement to the police or anything like that? And she said, yes, she had given a statement to the police. Now, I have been seeing people online and saying this cause I didn't read it, but there's a page called the Bravo docket shout outs to them. Cause I really enjoy their content, but there is made of two lawyers who go through all the legal cases on Bravo, which is crazy that they can have a podcast, which means, you know, Bravo be having legal problems where they said that Monica's name of any rendition that we've heard is, is not in the federal documents of her giving a statement for Jen or a, a statement against Jen. So I don't know how true that is because I didn't hear it for myself. So I'll say allegedly, but it sounded like Monica lied about that too, because she didn't make herself look good when she brought up the FBI. <laughs> so... She says the whole page was really just to expose Jen. And in the process, like Andy said, in the process of exposing Jen, you hurt the cast. She goes on and says she really doesn't feel like the page was really coming for the ladies. And everybody's like, what do you mean? You you know, they call Heather the tea slur. Um, they call, they reposted the comment of Shrek and basically what they were saying and what, what it boils down to that it wasn't clicking for Monica is that no, you guys didn't say that, but you constantly were posting it over and over and you were adding them to the messed up and hateful things that Jen said about them. That doesn't mean that you, you didn't lessen the blow. You amplified it. And it wasn't clicking for Monica. It really wasn't. And Heather was sitting on the couch where she was like, "I we all have examples of how you harmed us with this page. So I guess Monica was tagging them. And um, on Instagram, she was tagging them. They also had two pages because Andy was like looking because Andy was like, explain this to me because I don't understand how this page was a detriment to you guys. And Heather was like, okay, let me explain it to you. She was like, if you go look up the page, like go look up the page. And he was like, there's two accounts. And she said the first one got, Heather said the first account got taken down because of cyberbullying or because Sharif and Jen gave them a cease and desist. Monica said, no, it didn't. It didn't get taken down for that. It got taken down for something else because what they were posting was facts and they were and everyone was like no you weren't posting any facts and they made she made the second page I guess the second page is what they made off of Tanisha's um account that her finster that she was using to like stalk her um her baby daddy so then they talk about 
um, Monica, because Monica is really feeling like she did such a, an amazing job and what she did was so noble and it really wasn't. And like Heather said, Monica, you're not a hero and she's not. And then Monica's rebuttal to that was, Heather, I'm okay with being the villain in your story because you're a clown in mine. In what way has Heather harmed you? In what way has she really harmed you? You may think she was a clown for the whole black eye thing. for, And we'll talk about that. We'll talk about that with Heather. But what has she specifically done to you versus you being a part of a troll page that has really, really like been coming at them for a while like you've done more harm to them than them than vice versa so that whole like you're a clown in my story it wasn't slap it didn't slap monica it didn't slap so they whitney ends up saying which i wish they whitney would have spoke up more she says something about like i'm more concerned about the text messages so i guess they were releasing private text messages and things of that nature andy went through and um heather ends up giving andy her phone where she was like because my because heather said y'all were tagging us like relentlessly about the like about the stuff that y'all were posting on your page and monica was like yes we were because we wanted you to see it and i'm like why did you want them to see it like you act like they didn't know that jim was saying those things about them they knew who that lady was and so heather gives andy her phone and andy was just a uh, scrolling just scrolling like really and it's like dang y'all was adding them that much like that's a that, that's harassment at that point if i'm not responding to you that's a lot that's a lot so then heather says they've cleaned up the page a lot which they have because if you go on the page you don't see that much stuff about the ladies and it does really feel like they took off certain things about certain housewives just so around the time of this that they wouldn't they wouldn't get caught up. And then Lisa chimes in and I wrote, shut up, Lisa. I told y'all, Lisa was irritating me. I think I wrote, shut up, Lisa, like at least four or five times in my notes. And then that's when Monica brings out the burn book. And if you don't know, the burn book is just a reference from Mean Girls, which I thought maybe she did that or the network. I don't know. She thought she was making like... She thought it was cute and it making fetch happen, but it was lame. Like the whole Gossip Girl references are lame. This was lame because there was nothing in it. And then Heather got really mad. So did Lisa, where Lisa was like, girl, we had to deal with this for the past three or two years. What else you got to really say about us? Like, I don't want to hear this. Burn and Heather was like a flop. It was such a flop. And it was weird to me to see Monica being mad that the girls weren't impressed or weren't weren't taking the burn book as a as a joke it was weird it was she had that thing on her lap and she was like like she did something and i was like monica what and then she was upset because as andy is flipping through the book he's like is anything in here new and she was like, oh, yeah, like, no, like, it's just like I was taking a dig at myself because the page that they showed or the pages that they showed, there was a high school photo of Lisa where it says she was a, a B. Then there was another page of Monica of herself where she called herself a fugly slut and untrustworthy. And then there was a page of Andy where it said he was like hot and all of that stuff. And I'm like, Monica, why would you think they would think this is funny? The burn book in Mean Girls wasn't even meant to be funny. When Regina George ripped out those pages and threw them in the hallway and them girls started to pick them up, they started throwing fades with each other. People were slamming each other in the lockers. They was trying to choke each other out. And it was so bad, they had to shut down the school so they could have a like a come to Jesus moment in the gym so that they could talk to these girls about sisterhood. Like that wasn't even, it was funny to watch, but that wasn't even like funny in the context of the movie. It basically was showing how messed up it is to be that nasty and write hateful things about people and gossip. So why would you think it would be funny? Like it didn't make sense. 
It really didn't make sense. And after this part of the, of the reunion, I realized Monica really did not have a plan of how to like get, get the ladies on her side because the hole she kept digging got deeper and deeper and deeper. So then Andy is flipping through the book and he basically says to ex basically that in order for y'all to expose Jen, you made the ladies collateral damage. Then he said, how was this really helpful towards the ladies? Because you're reposting negative and hateful things about them. Why did you think that they were going to like understand where you were coming from? And Monica was like, well, we were just trying to show how messed up of a person Jen was. And like Heather said, by constantly retweeting and adding us to the negative stuff that she already said about us. How does that help us? Then, um... Andy asks Monica he was like no he makes a statement where he's like I'm actually surprised that you're surprised that these ladies are mad at you and Monica's like yeah because they were such fans of the page and anytime Monica says that these ladies were such fans of the page all they can show us is Angie they can't show us nobody else which is like Angie is the newest person a part of the group and the thing about what Angie is saying in the DM, someone said that that DM was in reference to a post they made about the other Angie. And I don't think the other Angie and the and Angie like each other. But whenever she, Monica says these ladies were fans, I'm like, okay, is it because they followed the page that you thought they were fans? Because you don't have, they're not showing you, they're not showing you having evidence of them liking posts or them giving you evidence. I thought when she brought the burn book, there was going to be pages where she had cutouts or information showing that like Lisa, Meredith, Whitney, or Heather, or Jen, or anybody else that's been on Salt Lake was feeding the account information, but she didn't have that. So her constantly saying they're fans of the page doesn't hit because people follow accounts all the time. That doesn't mean that they're fans of the, of the page. You might just want to watch it to see how the person crash and burns in real life. So she then starts to say that Monica starts to say they have positive things to say about the ladies and Heather scoffs at it where she's like just because you posted one positive thing doesn't make you a hero when there's like 10 or 12 or, or a thousand posts that are negative about us. And I was like, that's the part about Monica that irritates me about this whole situation. She tries to act like she's so self-righteous. Like what she did um, to combat Jen was so, it makes her so, like, a, like a hero. And it's like, no, what you did was messed up. It was wrong. Is Jen Shaw a horrible person? Yes, most definitely. Hopefully that lady in prison going to therapy. Maybe she could think about how messed up she was to those uh, the elderly people and the women on this show and to the people in her real life. But Monica is not some saint. She is not some saint. So this is when Lisa started to make sense for me because Lisa made a statement where she said, based off of what was on that page, you don't like us. So why do you want to be around us? You effing hate us. And I said, yeah, Monica, why? Because what Lisa said was true. Why? <laughs> like, based off that page, you hate us. So I think Andy was like, could it be true that you wanted to be on the show and you wanted to be friends with them? And she was like, yes, like both can be true. I wanted to be on the show and I wanted to be friends with them. And then Lisa said something and Monica got really upset where she was like, you act like I don't belong here. And they kind of looked at her like, girl, you don't. And I said, well, they not lying. <laughs> then I, this is where I realized Mona, also where I realized, like I said, after this segment, I realized Monica dug herself into a deep hole that she didn't realize she couldn't get out of, but she started to get really flustered and very overwhelmed because she started to like contradict herself and it wasn't making sense. So she said she knew it was going to come out that she was reality Von T's. So then Andy said, why not be honest? Why not? Cause what you led with was you had an affair. And then she was like, well, I mean, when we made the page, we said me and my friends or whoever we, they, she did the page said that they were going to go to the grave with reality Von T's. So 
They then said, well, you weren't you the ones that leaked the video? That's when Lisa was like, we know how you got that information. You leaked the video of Jen, uh, of Jen Shaw. You logged into her security cameras. And she was like, what are you talking about? I took that, uh, Lisa was like, I took that video of Jen and Kona, I guess that's the name of the designer, with my own phone. But Lisa's rationale by saying that, um, What's her name? Monica logged into the security footage was the whole Snoop Dogg exchange that they had where I think they were at, I forgot where they were at, but they were at an event and Lisa and Monica got into it where Lisa was like, I work hard for everything I got. So if I want to talk about it, I can talk about it. And Monica was like, well, you don't have to always talk about it. Like, oh, I went and saw I'm going to go see Snoop Dogg or oh, I met Snoop Dogg. And Lisa looked at her and it shows in that video where Lisa was like, I never told you I was going to I was I met with Snoop Dogg. You're lying, Monica. And then Monica's rebuttal was like, oh, you forgot. You forgot. And Lisa was like, no, Monica, you're lying. I never told you about that. Girl, that's when I was like, when I saw that, I said, girl, so she really she would she shouldn't have known about that. She really shouldn't have known about that. So then Monica was like, no, Jen told me. And she was like, no, you logged into the security cams. You were stalking Jen. And Lisa did post proof. If I still have the uh, screenshot in my phone, I'll post it where it was a screenshot. It looked like a security cam screenshot of, of uh, Jen sitting in her house at like the kitchen table or the kitchen counter, like going through her phone. And I was like, yeah, girl, what's going on with that? So then Monica was like, Jen told me to set up her cameras and keep it in uh, and put it in my name. And I said, that don't sound right. I mean, I get her saying set up my security cameras, but why would you still keep it? Even if that lady told you to set it up in your name, why would you still like, why would you do that? I wouldn't want to do that. That seems like a liability issue. And so they said that she was stalking Jen and she was like, I wasn't stalking Jen. They were like, you were driving past her house. You are definitely stalking Jen. You are definitely stalking Jen. And then I think this is where Lisa says something. Oh no, I forgot to say this. The other point that Lisa made that I agreed with is when she told Monica, she said, if you thought what you did was so noble, why didn't you just come out and tell us? You didn't want to. You didn't want to come out and tell us because, like, you knew it was wrong. So, back to the stalking Jen. They said Monica was stalking Jen. They ended up showing us videos of her driving past Jen's house, like, several different videos of several different dates. And I said, ooh, Monica. Ooh, Monica. That is, that's not good, sis. That is not good. And they were like, she did it, like, 20 times. And Monica's whole thing was like, you know, you do it like you you stalk your ex-boyfriends. I said, that's not healthy either. And then Lisa was like, you do that when you're like 12 or 16. Like not when you're 40 years old, a single mother with no income. I said, Lisa. <laughs> Lisa dragged the Angie read about your, you're irresponsible. You're out here spending your children's money on a purse. And showing them a, you're a bad example. That was a read. And this was a read. She was like, you are a mother of four. A single mother of four with no income driving past somebody's house so you could get on a show. I said, baby, baby. So Monica's rebuttal to that was the FBI told us to do it. And everybody was like, girl, what? The FBI, I think. Everyone's laughing in Monica's face and Monica's getting upset and angry. When I tell you Lisa and Angie was dying on that other side of the couch and I'd have been laughing with them too because what Monica said made no sense. Mind you, I can't stand, like I don't like seeing people get laughed at, especially if it's not warranted. But in this case, it was warranted because what Monica said was absurd and it didn't make any sense. She sounded crazy. <laughs> like I, they were, and like Angie said, so the FBI tasked you to check up on Jen and they didn't think to call the police or have any other agency look into this lady. 
And it's like, yeah, Monica, that doesn't make sense. And even if they did ask you that, I definitely don't think they would have wanted you to tell us this. It's not making sense. The dots not connecting, Monica. They not connecting. So because Angie and Lisa are laughing at Monica, Monica yells, y'all are mean. That's why there's a burn book because y'all are mean effing girls. And I'm like, Monica, what are you? You were clicked up on a troll account like posting up messed up stuff about them even though it was, it was repost of what Jen said about them you still kept putting it out there and then when Jen got locked up the page should have went down because you keep saying the goal of the page was to take Jen Shaw down she got indicted she got arrested on tv her reputation was tarnished the page should have went down but y'all kept going so the whole like we were just doing it to take jen shaw that down that doesn't matter anymore because you still was writing disparaging things about the ladies you, you the point doesn't stand anymore sis so then Andy's telling everybody to stop laughing so he can get some clarification of what Monica is saying. So Monica is like the FBI wanted her and her little friends to drive past the house to catch Jen drinking and driving. And Andy was like, well, if she at the house, how is she drinking and driving? Then because that that excuse didn't stick, Monica was like, well, my friends were just trying to well, like we were trying to get our money back because, you know, she she didn't give us our money back. And I'm like, Monica, that doesn't make sense when you said you worked for free. So what money was you trying to get back? Because she didn't pay you. So there was no need for you to try to get money back. So it's not clicking. So then Andy ends up talking, doubling back to the security camera. And he's like, so you had access to her security cameras and Monica's like yes I had access but I didn't look at them and I find that hard to believe especially when Lisa posted that picture which I showed y'all um if I find it showed y'all of like Jen just sitting in her house and the the um the screenshot is of an actual like text messages with Monica's name on it that she probably got from like Tanisha because Tanisha just out here giving up all these receipts. So I find that hard. Even if I didn't see that, I do find that hard to believe because if you release the DMs and text messages, I definitely think you would, list, would release audio. You probably just didn't hear anything like salacious enough for you to like release it because it was already out there for the press. Like we already, everyone thought that lady was guilty. So there was really no need. So then Andy is like, well, if if she was just stalking Jen, why do y'all feel uncomfortable around Monica? And Heather laid it out very plainly and very good. She said she was a fan, a crazed fan who begged Jen for a job. She got the job. She then created a troll account because they won't cool like that no more. Or, you know, Jen's a horrible person. Then you snitched on the lady and got her locked up to now you're on the show. You're still running the troll page. We don't really know you running the troll page. And now it comes out that you're running it. You then bring a burn book so you don't have any humility or any remorse for what you did. That's all red flags. And I said, you ain't lying. You ain't lying. So then Heather takes it a step further to say that like Monica ru ruined the housewives experience because she's now saying like if you can hold any troll page accountable because people on social media are relentless. They can be. We seen it. We seen it. And so Heather's just kind of like if you can hold one person accountable and create distance, then why not do it? And so she also says, and you could probably get more high caliber of women if the social media aspect didn't play a huge part into why people don't want to be a part of the show. So Monica takes offense, like, like how dare you? And I'm like, Monica, ma'am, you what they what they're saying is it elitist? Is it classes? It could be taken that way, but at this point. I'm seeing it a different way. If I was them, I would be like, yes, I'm a high caliber woman because I don't, I'm not spending my free time harassing people I don't know, making up troll pages of people I don't like to expose them. Like stan accounts are weird. Y'all are weird. You okay, I get it. You don't like a, a, a artist or an actor or somebody specific and you think they're horrible. And you may be right, but to spend all your free time stalking their pages, stalking their social media, stalking the news just so you can post every bad thing about them to be like, see, see, I told you this person is evil. I told you this person, you're a weirdo. You're weird and you need to seek help because you should not be that obsessed with somebody if you hate somebody block delete and move on that's what normal people do 
So Lisa says something, and this is where I think Monica lost her job, is because Lisa says, y'all brought somebody on this show that y'all knew for a fact did not like us, and none of y'all effing care that we're upset about it. And Andy was like, no, we didn't. And then Heather is like, well, Monica's saying production knew. And then Andy's like, Monica, you saying we knew, like production knew? And Monica says, yes, I told production and casting that I was reality Von Tease. So Andy is like, hold up now. Now, if we would have known you were reality Von Tease, we definitely would not have, um, we would not have allowed you to be a part of this. And Monica's like, well, no, that's what happened. I said, girl, this is where you lost your job. And this is where they introduced them two new girls. I think one of them girls' name is Brittany. She look like she gonna have Monica energy because she is an actual actress. That's what it says in her bio. And she gives kind of extra energy like she wants to be famous. And then the other girl's name, I think is like Millie. She's Taiwanese. She looked like Jen for a minute. Her and Jen got them hard jaw lines. And I was like, mm, I don't know. But then I saw her husband. They give very much Latter-day Saints Mormons. And I said, yeah, you gonna fit in. Right now, I think the girl at the Sundance Festival, her and Lisa probably gonna run into each other. But I definitely feel like when Monica did this, they definitely said, we gonna have to put her on pause. Cause she, she, she about to get us caught up. Click up. And they called them other girls up and said, we about to film get your bags come on Let's come talk on about the greek mafia and the black eye of it all so angie so angie monica and meredith get into it because they are start like andy asks angie like who do you think was the reason for the whole greek mafia thing and pretty much angie is like monica monica is like no both me and meredith had this conversation about the greek mafia and I wasn't the one that sent the DMs about the bankruptcy and the tax lien. Well, Meredith was like, neither did I. But Monica, it is very suspicious that you were the one that brought up the Greek mafia while we were on the plane to Palm Springs. And I told you, that's a lot of information. Do you have evidence? And then I get a DM about it. And Monica gets upset because she's like, you're trying to make it seem like I was the one that brought up the conversation, that it was just a two-way conversation, like it was a one-person conversation. Like I was just giving you all this tea, but it was a two-way conversation. I think two things can be true. I think it definitely was a two-way conversation because Meredith doesn't like Angie or she didn't like Angie at the time. But I do think Aunt Monica was the one that sent the DMs because you were the one that introduced the Greek mafia. Nobody else brought up the Greek mafia. So why would you bring up the Greek mafia to Meredith? And then several days later or hours later, she getting DMs about tax liens and bankruptcies. So then Angie tells them like, y'all been coming from my family. Y'all been coming from my, my businesses, my integrity. Y'all are trying to paint me out to be a fraud and I'm not a fraud. That is not who I am. So then Monica says something about like same, same, like y'all been coming after me. And Heather's like, girl, you are not the same as us. You are nothing like us pretty much. And then Monica says, y'all don't try to come for small businesses because Angie made fun of my swaddling business. And Angie's like, no, I didn't. And Monica said it happened off camera. And I said, see, Monica, you, you, you no, because you've brought everything that they have been talking, that you've had conversations with these ladies off camera, on the camera, that I do not believe that had Angie said that to you, that you would not have brought it to camera because Monica gets upset because she doesn't understand why everyone's upset with her when she's not the one that starts the, started the rumor and like Andy said you may have not started the rumor but you brung it to, to the show you brung the gay rumor to the show you brung the Greek mafia thing to the show you brung a nat like you brung a rumor to a national platform so of course you look worse because rumors are still bad if you're talking bad about someone off the show but no one brought it to the show you did you brought the rumor to the show, so you look worse. So then Monica and Angie really get into it. Lisa tries to chime in, and I was like, Lisa, shut up and hush. Shut up and hush. Shush. And that's when Angie calls Monica a low, a low, she said effing low, effing brow rat. And then Monica's like, brown, brown. And Angie's like, girl, I said, brow, brow. Don't try to bring race into it. And I said, did Monica forget that Angie is Greek? 
Like, they're negative people. They're people that don't like Greek people and have negative things to say about them, too. And they would be considered brown as well. And so I said, girl. And I that's why I like having the captions on because I was like, Maybe it was a Freudian slip, like maybe um, Angie did say brown, but even on the captions, legit Angie said effing low effing brow rat. I said, Angie said, girl, don't play the race card with me. I read because they were going back and forth because Monica was trying to say that like, don't try to act like I don't have integrity and I didn't work hard for everything that I got and that I'm not surviving and thriving. Cause I think Angie was like, I'm surviving and thriving. My businesses are doing great. What about you? And then Monica was like, we're on the same stage. And, and, and like, and she was like, but no, you're sitting down there. I'm sitting up here. I said, another showcase that you're a fan and Monica and Angie was like, I'd rather be sitting down here than being, than being you. And I was like, Angie makes a good point. Angie still has her integrity. No one's looking at Angie like she a snitch. <laughs> no one's looking at her like that. So then they get black on eye, y'all. So if I was production, Heather would either be fired or demoted. She would definitely either be put on pause or demoted or take a severe pay cut. Because what we not going to do is lie on me, girl. You out here telling everyone that maybe production let somebody break into the, like someone broke into the Airbnb and popped you in the face and then they took it out or that someone on production hit you. Yeah, girl. No, but I think what ended up saving Heather in the long run is that she apologized. She met us at the, she met the conversation with, I'm sorry to you, Andy, to the cast, to the network, to the audience. And I think because she took responsibility, she apologized and she ate humble pie. That is why she is still where she's at on. And, and I feel like if Monica would have apologized or at least been gave us some type of humility or being somewhat remorseful with the ladies, they probably would have found a way to somewhat make it work with her. But she couldn't give us that because at the end, we'll talk about that. Andy threw that girl a bone and she did not take it. So the black guy, uh, Heather ends up saying that Jen did give it to her. Like she doesn't know how she gave it to her, but she was like, Jen, like she woke up, it like, you know, dazed and confused. She went to see Jen and Jen was like, oh my God. Did I do that? Like, oh my God. And she was like, that was the only person I was with that night. So I, she the only one that could have did it. They were like, well, why didn't you tell us? And she said, I was scared. I'm even kind of scared talking about this right now because it's just a very scary, uncomfortable situation because I was scared of Jim. She then ends up saying that, you know, and like end, uh, ends up saying that like she took a lot of hits for like for Jim because of this they also have like footage but you can't really make out the audio and it does look like her and Heather were having Jen and Heather were having a conversation and Jen has her hand on her head like oh my god did I really do that and a lot of people speculated that Heather didn't say anything about Jen punching her because Jim was on probation and she was worried about her getting her bond revoked or maybe putting the um his uh her family like Sharif and the kids in financial debt even more financial debt that they were in trying to help keep Jen out of jail. But it just seems like Heather was just doing what she always did, which was cover for Jen. And the thing about Heather is, and it made me, I, I didn't feel bad, but I kind of felt bad. Like there was a piece of me that felt bad for her, especially at the end when Whitney got up and hugged her and she was like, you know, um, I like, if I could say any, well, let me not get ahead of myself, but pretty much Andy was like, did you not think this situation was going to get bigger? And she was like, yeah, it definitely got bigger. On top of that, Reality Von Tees was like fixated on the black eye and trying to expose it. She was like, I tried to deflect with this whole situation with like dark humor. And everyone was like, girl, this was not funny. You don't, you're not funny. Then she said she did get nervous when the lawyers got involved because they did do a, like an investigation, didn't they? And then she said, that's why she asked Jim, like, what should we say? What should we do? Like, help me out. And they show a flashback of that. And Jim was like, oh, tell him you got spiders in your eyes. Y'all are not in the Amazon. That sounds stupid. Okay. Then Andy was like, girl, you blame production. Like you were really messed up for blaming production and assault isn't funny. Like Andy was definitely holding Heather's feet to the fire. And then uh, he circles the conversation back to Monica where he's asking Heather, like, could you give Monica grace since that's what we're trying to give you? And Heather's like, no, it's not the same because I internalized what happened to me. And Andy pointed out like, girl, not really because you said somebody on production 
might have hit you and Heather was like no I said it as a joke like I wasn't meaning it seriously he was like girl it's still not funny it's not funny at all not funny at all so then she was like did you like when you were talking I think Andy was like when you were talking to Jim what did she say to you and Jim pretty much say lie she said if they don't have footage deny 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 and everyone's like dang like wow and then they were like did Jen ever thank you and she was like no she she did not thank me she was like I realized Jim was never my friend and she was like I will never be in a friendship where I know the person is pretending to be my friend and when she said that all Monica could do was hang her head in shame like Monica was so defeated by the end of this uh, reunion because they was whacking her left and right and they hit her with facts they hit her with facts and she re and I think she realized by the end of it that the door was definitely closed like they were not welcome to opening that door for her especially because she didn't show any like humility she didn't seem like she was remorseful for how she may have harmed them so Heather basically says she would have never came out and told the people about what happened to her had they not had the whole exposing situation in Bermuda she would have took it to the grave but as the situation was happening and everyone was like yelling and freaking out about what happened she realized that like this is too familiar it felt like Jen Shaw all over again and she was like I no longer want to contribute to that type of toxicity so they're basically saying Monica remind them of Jen so Andy ends up asking Monica, like, what do you think? And Monica brings up how her and Heather and Angie probably are in the same boat. Then Lisa wants to chime in, talk about what about me? And I said, Lisa, shut up. Don't nobody care about you right now. Hush. And even Andy was like, Lisa, cut it. Be quiet. And she was like, I'm just, shut up, Lisa. Shut up now. So Monica brings up about the physical abuse that she may have, like, you know, allegedly, because we ain't seen it. I ain't. She that might have came to her by way of gin. You know, she brings up the whole pouring of the drink on Angie's head, the black eye situation. And then she says something happened to her with um, with Heather. And Heather was like, girl, that's not the same thing. Yes, you might. Jim might have did something to you, but we both did not. We didn't, we didn't do it the same way. Like the outpouring of our emotions was not the same way. And Monica even said like, yeah, I was out there. You were not. And she was like, yeah, apples to oranges. We're not bonding on this. So then Andy goes around asking all the ladies, like, what do you think about this? And they all kind of had the same thing. Like they, you never, Jim was unpredictable and you ain't never know what she was up to. You just never knew. You never knew. And so they all understood why Heather didn't say anything. And this is where I felt bad for Heather because Heather gives very much. She was always picked last. Heather's not conventionally attractive. So she probably internalized people not finding her attractive, not being picked, not being a part of the cool girls clique. And that shows up in different ways. And in Heather... Heather wants to always be in that clique. Like you've been, like you were covering for the bad behavior of Jen Shaw since 2020 because she was your friend. You said for three years you were doing all of that because you wanted to be in the clique no matter what. And you did it at a detriment to yourself. And I just felt bad because it's like, dang, like you really was that caught up and you really wanted to be chosen that badly that you played yourself so Andy was like what would what would you say if you could talk to Jen and Heather was like I would tell her I'm no longer her bitch and then she started breaking down when Whitney was hugging her saying that I have so many regrets like I regret the way I harmed my friends my family the cast everybody just off the strength of wanting to be friends with her and then she says you know what I'm glad you're in prison Jen I said okay and then the episode pretty much ends with Andy asking the ladies could they move forward with Monica like isn't there something that Monica could say to help y'all move forward and they all pretty much said that they don't trust Monica they do not trust Monica and the door is closed Monica got a bone thrown to her by Andy because Andy was like Andy said well Monica is there anything that you felt was unsaid or you didn't like you wanted to say that you didn't have the opportunity to say and she was like no and everyone looked at her like oh okay and that's honestly where the episode ended and you could definitely tell that Monica was defeated because even when they bring out the drinks for them to drink she looks so bewildered and in distress and they were the girls were drinking they drinks looking at her like yeah she fired not even including her in the conversation like she really isolated herself and put herself on an island all by herself and I said girl why
Wow, wow, wow. Yeah, y'all, that is it. That is all. Remember to be bravely authentic. This was definitely longer than I expected, but it is what it is. <laughs> Please drop down in them comments below and let me know your thoughts. And I'm out, y'all. Deuces. Deuces.